Hey everyone, Ashish Anil Sait from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to another exciting video in the series of ESP IDF. Today, it's been more than three months since we have deployed our IoT device at our office, which I demonstrated in my last video. And from then, I have simply deployed that device and I haven't turned it off as well. So this simply means that device is running 24 seven without any halt and now it is running absolutely fine. So whenever I have to turn on the fan, whenever I have to turn on the light or turn it off, turn it on, whatever I want to do, uh, depending on my usage. So it's running absolutely fine. So it may be stopped just because of some internet issue or some other issues. So that is quite obvious. So we can ignore that, but it is running 24 seven and it is absolutely running perfectly for me. And I'm totally happy with that. So I'm oh, unhappy with that also because in case I have to make any changes to the IoT device, let's say I want to change some functionality, then in that case, I have to make a physical connection with the device and then only I have to upload the new code, which I don't like actually. So that is the reason I have come up with a solution and that is called as OTA, which is over the air. So in our today's video, I'm gonna demonstrate that how you can use the OTA to upgrade your firmware to your IoT device without having a physical connection with your device. So today's video will be displayed or you can say demonstrated in three parts. Firstly, deployment of your IoT device, which you can see right now what is happening. Secondly, we'll set up the server from which we will be uh, installing the firmware wirelessly. Thirdly, we'll see the coding part. And finally, we'll see the demonstration. So let's move ahead. All right, guys, now uh, we will be connecting it or let's say we will be deploying our circuit or deploying our home automation circuit uh, at our place. So you can see I have uh, set up my box right here and now I just need to like place it here so that I can uh, finalize it or you can say I can uh, deploy it like this, right? Now, uh, what I need to do is I just need to uh, wire in all the uh, like wires according to the appliances uh, that I'm having right in uh, this room, right? So in this, I will be having four appliances, right? So one is fan, two is your light and third one is also your light. But uh, uh, in this room, particularly, we only have three devices. So I'll be using that one only because I'm, I was having this one only, which we have already seen in a previous video as well. Right now, uh, let me deploy this thing so that uh, I can clarify you uh, more things uh, like here. All right, everyone. So now you can see the system is uh, deployed and uh, currently as per the deployment, you can see all the switches are turned off, but still one of the light is turned on. And that's the reason we can see this device in the brightness, right? So as you can see on your screen, we have this appliances and in fact, this is bedroom one and the code which I have written for this uh, device that is with respect to this bedroom one. So right now you can see appliances two is set to one and this appliances two is particularly this tube light which is already turned on right now. So if I will turn it off, you can see the light is off and that's the reason currently uh, you are able to see your device just because of my camera light, right? So this is what I have right now. All right, everyone. Now let's start with the coding part. And for that, now, as you can see on your screen, I have opened up the Git repository for the project that we have built in our last project. And if you have already watched that video, that I'm damn sure that you are already having this code with you because you may have tried this with your ESP32 definitely. Now, 
just because in a previous video we have seen that how we can connect our appliances with the fireways and accordingly how we can control that we have already seen that but this time just because we are about to upgrade your firmware into the esp32 that we have on our main device and we just want to upgrade that without having a direct physical connection right so for that I have already made up the changes with all the stuff that we need for OTA, which is over the air. Now, let me shift to that code, which we don't have right now on the Git repository. But by the time you will be watching this video, definitely you will have a link in the description. So you can check that and you can directly uh, download the code. Now, let me go to the code. So this is the code which I'm having with me. And inside this, this is the main.cpp. Inside this, we have multiple things. We have done all the stuff like we have already done in the previous video. Plus, we have make it in such a way. Uh, let me go to that part only because most of the things are almost the same, right? And I'll explain you the OTA part as well. But before that, let me go to the coding thing which will execute your OTA. Okay. So over here, you can see like here we were actually getting the request from the firebase account and accordingly we were using that to trigger something right so in the previous video you've already seen that how we were triggering it to turn on or to turn off any appliances whether it's fan or whether it's a uh, light right so that we have already done now similarly what i have done is one i have created one extra parameter i have extra uh, created one extra uh what you call uh OT upgrade, which is another uh, attribute for us, which I will be using to get the value from the Firebase account. And on the basis of that only, I want this OTA upgrade to happen because this code of OTA will definitely be there in your code, but it will only work when you will execute it, right? So this is what exactly we are doing right here, right? And for that, you can see here also, this is the way how I'm reading the data. So this is the name OTA upgrade. Uh, let me go to the Firebase account or you can say Firebase real-time database so that I can show you where exactly I'm having this. So let me go to there. All right. So you can see this is my Firebase real-time database with which I have already linked my ESP32 or you can say I've already linked my code which I will be uploading to the uh, ESP32. Right. And in there, we have four parameters, appliances one, appliances two, appliances three, and appliances four. And along with that, there is one new parameter which I have set right here, and that is OTA upgrade. So here, whenever I'll simply put a value as one, means I have to send the value as one. Whenever it will receive that value as one, it will simply pick that and accordingly, it will start the upgrade process that you can see here, right? So this is how this OTA upgrade is going to start, right? So this is about the functionality, like when exactly your OTA is going to happen, but how exactly the OTA is going to happen and from where it will fetch your uh, firmware, or you can say a bin file, which we usually get while uh, uh, like building your project, right? You may have seen in my previous videos that we have already built a project whenever we want to flash it. So before flashing, we have always built the project. Then only we were flashing it because during the build process, we get this dot bin file, which is very, very important for your flashing process, right? So the same thing is going to happen. Now, where exactly we have this bin file, which we will be fetching uh, and accordingly the upgrade process is going to happen, right? So for that, let me go to the main OTA code where I have already set this up and uh, there is one twist right here, right? So uh, just leave it, leave it and leave it. So the, we can leave this code uh, and this is the main code which we just saw. So here we have this OTA example uh, uh, task in which we will be simply executing this OTA process. And these are the basic event handler which will be used in here. So you can see this, like whenever error will come, whenever connected, header sent, header, data, all this stuff. So accordingly, we are executing something. But for now, we are just uh, sending a debug log. So we will just have that only. 
Uh, now let's come to the main code of OTA. Over here, we are just starting the process. We are just setting up the configuration. Uh, okay, we are just setting up the configuration. And in the configuration thing, we have set a few things. One is URL, one is timeout, one is event handler. Event handler is basically this, which I was just talking right now. And apart from that, keep alive, whether it's going to keep alive or no. So I'm just setting it at true. So this is how we have it. And similarly, we have some few configurations as well. But this is the main configuration which we need to understand right now, right? And over here, you can see one more thing. I have this. I have set up a URL. And the URL you can see right here seems to be a local URL, not any URL which you may be getting from different server. So absolutely, this is a local URL and we are actually going to start this because currently I am taking a scenario that I am working in a local network where I have multiple devices at my place and I want to upgrade all of them one by one whenever I want to do that, right? So this is what exactly I am doing, right? And for that, this is the URL which I have written a different script uh, on the basis of which we will be uh, enabling this uh, HTTP request or you can say enabling this API. So once that server is up and running, then only we can execute and fast this bin file. Otherwise, we won't be able to do that, right? So this is uh, about the URL. I'll come to this point either. So this is basically the code right now in which once you have all the configuration, once you start this OTA upgrade process, accordingly, it will start attempting to upload and accordingly, it will start downloading all the file that you uh, like from the URL that you have provided. And accordingly, it will give you the status. If it is done successfully, it will simply display a message as OTA succeed. And now after that, it will automatically reboot. Because after flashing the program, it will restart and we will see that whether the upgrade has happened or not. So this is how it's going to happen. And otherwise, you can see uh, if uh, it doesn't happen correctly, if something failed, then we are going to get this message like firmware upgrade failed. So in this way, we will be having it. And this is the actual process of OTA upgrade, right? So I hope you have got a clarity and don't worry about the code. You can check the link in the description. You can download the code and you can start understanding the code uh, line by line. In case you face any difficulties, feel free to leave a comment below so that I can help you as soon as possible. And now let's move ahead and let's understand where exactly we're going to get this from, right? Okay, so this is the main project and inside this, this is the uh, like folder or directory, you can say. This is the directory which I have opened in the Visual Studio, right? And similarly, you can see apart from this, we have this files. We have this app.py, which is the main script in which I have written the code accordingly. And uh, here is the virtual environment in which I have installed uh, the code accordingly, or you can say install the dependencies. So basically, in my case, let me show you what exactly I'm doing, right? Uh, let me open it up in the editor. So right here, you can see I have written a very small script and that script is with the help of Flask. So I'm actually using the Flask uh, like uh, uh, package over here, which is actually helping me to generate all these routings, which I'm able to use in this way to download the file and to accordingly display you the messages depending on the successful or the unsuccessful uh, executions, right? So this is how exactly I'm doing it. And uh, for this, we have this virtual environment in which I'm actually installing this Flask. And for installing Flask, it's quite very easy. You just have to have your virtual environment. Okay, let, let me show you that instead of just telling it, right? So now I'm inside this directory which is this one. And over here, firstly, I have to activate my virtual environment, right? So I'm using the MacBook. So I have to do it in this way. So in this way, my virtual environment is activated. So I can simply check it like pip list and it will show me all the packages already installed. So over here, you can see the flask is already installed. So I don't have to install it, but in your case, uh maybe it will not be there by default so you just have to simply create your virtual environment and simply just type pip install 
flask and it will install all the dependencies and flask successfully and after that we can go ahead right so the flask is installed successfully now after that our next step is to simply oh sorry not this uh one more thing python space app.py right so now just start it flask app debug mode can't assign okay the problem is with the uh, ip address so for that right now i just have to use my system's ip address so i'll have to check this i'll see like what ip address has been assigned on my system and uh, that that only i can use basically right so this is the one which i have to use so i'll go back in here go in here just simply replace it right now save it go back and start it again now you can see the server is started you can open it up you can see currently we are not able to do anything or uh, because on the root url we don't have any routings created right we have the routings but the routings is on a different place and that different place is slash downloads slash the name of the file right now the next part comes here is where is this file name right so let me show you where exactly we are having it for that we have created a separate directory which is with the name files and inside this files we have this bin directory or whatever you call right so we have this dot bin file which is your firmware which we have to actually upload to the esp32 board which we have with us and which we have already deployed at our place right and in fact we have two uh, devices right now so i'll show you how to do that one by one right so this is the way how we have done it but this time i'll do one thing i'll uh, let's say take the latest one right and you know where to get it you just have to go to the build directory inside this you go in here and this is the one so i'll simply just copy it i'll go in here and i'll simply paste it okay it's not showing from here okay this is the one i'll simply copy it and uh, paste it i'll simply replace it okay so i have the latest one right now once i have this ready with me what i need to do is i need to start uh, uh what we call first we have to simply flash the program also because for the first time we have to attach the usb to ttl converter uh, with the device so that we can upload the code for the first time because after that every time you have to upload the code you don't have to make a physical connection with the device you can do that wirelessly over the air right so that's what uh, our main agenda is because i don't want to go to every location where i have my ESP32 or my ESP32 device deployed and to flash the program. Instead, what I can do is I can simply hit a request, which is over the air, which is over the internet, and then I can simply flash it, right? So this is what exactly I can do. And that's my motive is. Now, let me show you this with the ESP32 board, which I have already connected to my system. And for that, uh, let me open up a, a new terminal right here. Okay, so right, I am here. So, uh, so idf.py build, this will simply build your code and accordingly it will create the final uh, bin file, which we actually need, right? So right now you can see it's successfully done and we have the bin file created. And now just flash it. And for that, I can simply check whether i have my device connected and we have some port available for that or not right so let's go in here and let's check it see we have it right here right so that means i can simply flash it now that we have the port available we can flash the program but before flashing the program we have to do a little bit changes and we have to connect a usb to ttl converter to a device 
now that you can see this is the device which we have just created and here you can see there is one port which is a six pin port and uh, we have to connect our usb to ttl converter here and just look into the video this is the way how you have to connect it properly once it is connected there is one more thing that you have to do and that is you have to change the jumper and this jumper will be connected in this way so that we can enable the ESP32 for the flashing of the program. So this is the way how we have connected it properly. Now just connect the cable and connect it to the system. Now connect it to the system. Allow for the port. And now we can flash the program. The flashing is done. You need to make the changes again. Just remove the jumper and take it to the original position so that it won't be in the flashing mode anymore. So this is the way how you have to like remove it and connect it. So my configuration was already there for the SSID and password. So that's why you can see it is connected successfully. And now you can see everything is working fine and currently I'm using the data for bedroom two. That's what we have right here, right? So in this way we have it. So I'll simply click one and now you can see it started working and uh, it looks like there is some different issue. Let's see what's that. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Got it. The problem is with the IP address. We change the IP address. So the same thing we have to do in here also. Okay, fine. Let me do that quickly. All right. So now the code is uploaded successfully. Now the same thing we can try again. As you can see, everything is done successfully. It is connected to the Firebase account and now it can fast the data. Now let's repeat the process. Let's put one. Now it started doing it similarly this time you can see it has simply hit the request because it got the right url for that right so now we'll have to wait for it as you can see starting ota means the process has started right now we'll wait for it to finish okay so guys you can see segment and everything is done OTA succeed rebooting. So this is that particular uh, log or message you can say, which we will get when everything is fine. Means the OTA update is successful. And that's why we have got this message. And after that, it started rebooting. And accordingly, you can see it again started to connect. Means after the rebooting process, it started doing this. Now this time, we don't have any changes in our code that's why whatever we have passed it is going to take that but from next time onwards you just have to do one thing you don't have to do any like modifications in this and all you just have to create a code separately and as usual like i said uh where is this okay this one the code is with name this firebase hyphen esp hyphen idf dot bin so basically we just have to replace the bin file with a new one, uh, let's say whatever changes you have in a new file, just put that new file in here and similarly just hit that request from here. And what will happen? It will simply download the new data. It will simply flash the new code to your ESP32 chip and it will start working depending on your new changes. Or you can say whatever changes you have made to your code, it will start working accordingly. So this is how exactly your OTA upgrade works with ESP32. I hope you have got the understanding and the clarity on how it works. Now let's move ahead and let's see the final demonstration with the main devices that we have deployed on our uh, location, right? So we have two devices. I'll simply flash the base code so that 
from the next time i can simply flash a new code without directly making any physical connection so let's go to the location all right everyone so now uh, you can see i have this real time database right here and this is ot upgrade with value 0 right and uh, similarly uh, this is my another uh, you can say this is my device right with the code that it is already having and as per this code if i will turn off and uh, let me turn this off also right so if i will turn this on and if i will turn it on again the initial values of all the appliances is off that's the reason no appliances is turned on so this light which is turned on right now this is not connected to this device basically so that's why i have this light in my room right all right everyone so now let's make the changes to the code so right now you can see this is the code which uh, we have already uploaded uh, to the esp32 device now initially these are the values that are set for the relays because when I will set the value for the relay as one, it will simply turn off. So that's the present state that we have right here, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to change this value from one to zero. Okay, so now we have the changes right here. And now this simply means is that in the initial state, all your lights will be turned on, right? So this is the changes that I'm going to make right now so that I can demonstrate that what is going to happen, right? So now for this time, I don't have to flash it. I just simply have to build it. I'll simply build the code, nothing else. So let's wait for it to finish. Okay, so the build is successful. Now what I can do is I can simply go to this build directory as usual, like uh, I go before. So over here, you can see this is this firmware and let me set it as list so you can see today 545 right now it's 546 means one minute ago i just created this right so i'll simply copy this and just simply paste it here means i'm gonna replace it with the new file right so this time i have the new file so now let me do one thing let me upgrade the code so that I can demonstrate the changes. So I'm sending this value. Uh, okay, it's not turned on. Okay, fine. Uh, it will definitely not be turned on, right? So now I'll have to wait for it to upgrade and to change this value because once it is done, it will simply send the value as zero as well so that I can get to know that OT upgrade is successful, right? So let's wait for it to finish because it takes some time to upgrade it. Uh, so yeah, now you can see the OTA upgrade is zero. That means the OTA uh, upgrade is successful. And now we can see whether uh, there is some changes in here or not, right? So let me turn it off and let me turn it on again. Okay, anyways, uh, now I think it has restarted, right? So you can see initially the values were on. That's why it was on. Let me show you this again. Turn it off. It's turned off. Turn it on again. Okay, I think it didn't turn off. Uh, let me give it a gap. Okay. Okay uh maybe some uh, capacitor issue or something right so that's why you can see initially all the values were turned on uh, means the lights were on in the beginning and after that once the device is connected to the internet it changes the state depending on whatever it is fetching from the firebase real-time database so that's why now it fetched the data and accordingly the values are updated in here so this is the way how we upgrade it right so in the similar way uh, the our data will be upgraded 
in my another device also because I uploaded the same code with the same uh, uh, database, right? So that's why we have the upgrade in both the rooms uh, at the same time, right? So this is how the OT upgrade work. I hope this was helpful and you have uh, like loved this video, right? If you have loved this video, please do click on the like button. And also if you want to purchase this device or if you want to purchase the kit, then uh, check the link in the description for the device as well as for the kit if you want to buy it and if you want to make your home automated successfully, right? So just check the link in the description and get ready and make your home a complete smart home. So this was it for today. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you have liked this video, do click on the like button. And if you're new to this channel, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do click on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any future videos from our channel. So thank you so much. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and happy learning.